This is Julie with Sterling Insurance Group, and I'm here with Quentin and Bill, and we are here to answer some more questions regarding the coronavirus. So, Quentin, what are some risk management strategies businesses can apply to position themselves for success during, now, and after the pandemic? Yeah, thanks, Julie. So, for starters, I think to embrace this topic as a business leader or, or part of a management team, you know, recognize that you are very busy right now. You wore plenty of hats before coronavirus came along and you're probably wearing even more now. But recognize too that this is the perfect time to carve out time and devote additional resources to risk management planning. It's the perfect time to reflect on some of the business continuity measures you put in place moving into coronavirus and reflect on what could have been done more effectively here as you move forward. You know, another way of looking at this is, well, coronavirus is top of mind right now. The other inherent risks of business and of your industry, they've not gone away. In, in fact, they've probably even evolved and, and become more challenging. So what can you do right now to employ risk management strategies to strengthen your business's position, both during the pandemic and post-pandemic? I think the biggest thing that we want to touch on today from a risk management strategy perspective is a pandemic recovery plan. Everything else that I'll, I'll touch on is going to really fall under this idea. You know, who would have ever thought we'd talk about implementing a, a pandemic recovery plan? And what is it? You know, I think a, a better way of, of terming it or, or thinking about it is a business continuity plan. So as we talk through this, just in your, in your mind, kind of picture business continuity planning. And so at a high level, what are some of the things that, that you'd employ as, as part of a, a pandemic recovery plan? I think the first and most important is the designation of a pandemic response team, a designated team made up of, of leaders and, and others identified in your organization responsible for monitoring the ongoing situation of the pandemic. It will help make sure that that plan is activated to the appropriate degree throughout the life cycle of the pandemic or whatever the disruption might be that you're dealing with. It also is going to carve out time to review key business processes of yours, such as supply chain contingencies, operational processes, purchasing human resources. It will ensure that all of your critical business processes have a defined backup plan that will allow you to similarly and seamlessly transition and, and operate a new environment. It's also going to carve out time and help you build out you know, your finance and insurance program strategies. From a financial perspective, it'll, it will address uh, cash flow positioning and temporary borrowing capabilities, both before and heading into a pandemic or a business disruption. From an insurance perspective, it's going to do something similar in analyzing your insurance program. And you know, your business might choose to take on risk in a, in a post-pandemic or non-pandemic landscape that you'd modify as you move into a pandemic uh, recovery strategy. And so you know, it'll allow you to dive deeper into both of these aspects. And then lastly, as it sounds, a pandemic recovery plan is going to help you recover and get your business back to normal or new normal and, and strengthen its position for that. Some other things, you know, I want to touch on briefly in addition to a pandemic recovery plan. And I, and I think diving into a plan is going to reveal all of these, but also this is a great time to look at your remote workforce. Again, it's, it's an ongoing topic, but cyber strategy and IT infrastructure. You know, it's a good time to circle back and ensure that you've created and distributed a document to employees regarding cybersecurity and best practices, making sure they're educated and they understand the types of criminals that or the type of criminal activities that cyber criminals are conducting out there. It's also a good time to review your employees' access to your internal systems as they work from home and potentially as they work on their own devices. So now that everyone's more comfortable, it's a good time to review, you know, was too much access given in, in, in certain areas to certain employees? I think it, one thing we've seen is as, as employers move to a remote workforce, a lot of uh, access was given just for ease of, of transition. Now's a good time to pull back on access where it just simply isn't necessary. Switching gears a little, this is also a good time to review your employee handbook. How does remote workforce or how is it implemented into your employee handbook? handbook. Does your handbook address that? The reality is we're seeing a lot of employers finding benefits with remote workforce. There may be some of your team members' roles and responsibilities that may, may be most efficient to be left in, in the remote environment moving forward in a post-pandemic world. So is your, is your uh, employee handbook ready for that? Has it been prepared for that? This is a good time to take that on. 
I would take this one step further in saying that, you know, is remote workforce built into your return to work program? If you don't have a return to work program, now is an excellent time to create that. But if you do have one, has it addressed remote workforce and the, and the capabilities that that might bring to the table for that plan as well? And then lastly, you know, FFCRA, I'm sure you've been distributing materials to, to your team members, but have you made sure that your handbook and, and other HR practices and procedures are aligned to, to comply with FFCRA guidelines? And lastly, you know, what I'll leave with is don't overlook employees. This is a great time from a risk management perspective to make sure that you're doing everything you can to keep your remote workforce uh, happy, healthy, both physically and mentally. And so what are you doing to go above and beyond um, offering resources for emotional support? You know, we're to the point in this coronavirus where, you know, there really isn't a degree of separation anymore to some degree or another. Uh, everyone is feeling the effects in, in your remote team of this. And so whether it's teletherapy or some other type of resource, what can you implement to keep these employees um, both mentally and physically healthy? So all of this to say, it really is not too late to begin devoting some resource and carving out time for uh, risk management strategies to both help strengthen your business now, but then strengthen its future position as we move into a, a post-pandemic new normal. So if you, if you need any help, if you haven't seen a pandemic recovery plan before or want to know what one looks like, let us know. We're more than happy to plug in and, and help you out with that. Thank you, Quentin. And like he said, if you guys do need any information, just let us know and we'll be happy to send it over. For Bill, I do have a question. Um, can an employer keep employees on the health plan if they think that the layoff is temporary? Yes, we're getting this question from a lot of groups right now, and the answer to that, Julie, is yes. Right now, with the current nature of COVID-19 and the impact it's having on a lot of the organizations, employers can keep their employees on the group health care plan, um, even if the employees are laid off. And um, historically, that's not been the case. Historically, if employees were um, furloughed, then yes, generally speaking, they could stay on the plan, but if they were laid off, no, and we'll touch more on that in a minute. Um, but in the current state, yes, they can stay on the group health care plan um, for almost all of the carriers, all of them that we're working with. And from what we're hearing is just about all of the carriers across the country have adopted that. Now, there are a few um, provisions involved with that. The, the, ex the extension of coverage for laid off employees um, is allowed for all group sizes um, provided the premiums are paid based on the current payment policies. And there's no need right now to submit additional paperwork for these employees. Um, again, the employer group just needs to continue paying the premiums. Um, and the other couple more rules around this is the employer still needs to consider the uh, the individual that's not employed um, but staying on the group health care plan. They need to consider them still an employee and therefore eligible for coverage under the group's plan. And the employer should also notify the employee that benefits um, would be maintained for a specified number of months. And it's up to the employer group uh, to really monitor and manage their enrollment. Um, and then the carriers are going to be reevaluating this over the next month or two. And then also, if an employee does not return after the specified um, period, then the group would just proceed with the normal loss of coverage or termination process. And historically, this is different. I just want to lay out the differences so people know what their options are. Um, in the past, when employees were furloughed, uh, they were still remained active employees for W-2 purposes. Um, therefore, a lot of the plans and carriers would allow those employees um, to stay on the plan unless the plan document specifically said that if they went under a certain amount of hours work, they could not be on the plan. Um, but historically laid off employees, um, that's typically meant that the employment relationship ends and therefore they're not eligible to be on the group health care plan any longer or in some cases at the end of the month that they that the termination period ended and again that is not the fact right now um the given state employees laid off can still stay on the group health care plan and even if they're receiving unemployment insurance benefits they can still stay on the group health care plan and lastly um, when these employees do return back to work let's say it's a situation where they did remove they were removed from the group health care plan maybe they went to cobra or got their own individual plan or just didn't have insurance when they come back to work 
during COVID-19, the carriers that we're working with are waiving the waiting periods that traditionally are in place and they can have immediate coverage for those employees. I mean, it does not have to be indicated in their rehire policy. So to sum up your question about um, laid off employees, can they stay on the group health care plan? Yes, they can, um, provided that the employer group is still paying the premiums. And when those um, employees then do come back to work, the ones that got off the group health care plan, in that point, they can have immediate coverage and there's no there's no waiting period. OK, thank you for that. that that's good news. So thank you both Quinton and Bill for being with me answering these questions. If anybody has any other questions they would like us to answer, please comment below. And then if you would like to join our email campaign, again, comment your email below. I hope that everybody stays safe on this Wednesday and you have a great day. Thanks, Julie.